Dirty Moderates, uh, let me say at the outset that I have always been pro-immigration. Um, I know immigration has been the source of this country's strength, and I obviously, like the majority of us, all of us are immigrants from somewhere, and uh, cheap labor has been big businesses um, go to their domain to, you know, do everything from our, our lawns to our gardens, to our bathrooms, to our, our bus boys and everything, as you know. Um, but our immigration system has gotten more and more overwhelmed and there is a legal process and that legal process tends to get overridden by the mass of migrants at the border. This is not new. It's been going on a very long time and because of, uh, our asylum laws. Now, Every day, thousands of migrants cross the southern border illegally. Every day. And they're fleeing despotism and authoritarianism and, and terrible poverty. Uh, it's a very dangerous journey uh, in some instances. In some instances, people coming toward El Paso can walk from some Mexican cities across a kind of long bridge in a very peaceful way if they can get through. Um, and if these immigrants are fleeing violence and authoritarianism and and they can get into the United States, they often can stay. And in the past few years, uh, all these border crossings have been historically high. Uh, there's been a global migration trend for a number of reasons, but the two things that have happened, obviously, is the pandemic, uh, of course, and the collapse of a lot of Latin American countries um, and their economies and kind of um, depression level unemployment for them as well as autocratic governments have forced people um, from many Central and South American countries to uh, want to come to the United States. Now, the numbers are going to get higher. It's already started as of today, the day that a pandemic-era health rule called Title 42 ends. It ended today at noon. It will no longer be in force. It means that there will be more illegal crossings stressing the system. What is this policy and what does it mean? That's today's episode. Okay. And remember, I am not here to bait. I disdain xenophobia. I disdain any kind of race baiting. But I also believe real talk is important. And not being hostage to the far left, which sees absolutely no reason to secure a border. As a matter of fact, they want to decriminalize it. And in terms of the far right, which wants to use any kind of hatred of brown people as a weapon, I reject both patently and adamantly. Okay. Title 42 is the section of the Public Health Service Act, which was passed in 1944. And that what that does, it allows the government to halt the entry of people and imports in order to prevent the spread or the introduction of and spread of a communicable disease from outside our borders of the continental contiguous U.S., okay? All right, in March of 2020, COVID was... In its infancy, well, it was starting to spread and becoming a huge problem. But uh, the Trump administration, I believe, did the right thing in authorizing um, the Title 42 to go into effect under the guise of a not, or under the rubric of a national public health emergency, which would swiftly expel, expel people who crossed into this country illegally. OK, there's a disease. It's killing Americans. No new people. Two months ago, the Biden administration said that on May 11th, which is today, as I report to you, the public health crisis designation would end, meaning the public health emergency, okay, that COVID was officially over. You remember that announcement? Okay. In effect, that means that the use of Title 42 would come to an end. Now, Title 42 did a lot of expediting during COVID. OK, it made the border work easier um, and less, much less bureaucratic and much swifter, given uh, the state of emergency we're in. And the rule let border officials skip all the time consuming steps it takes to process migrants. We have a very time consuming step, a time consuming process that that involves allowing people to seek asylum. If you come here, the rule says from another country fleeing violence or oppression or terrorism or what have you, you are allowed to seek asylum using Title 42. It's like a 10-minute process, if that, compared with all the time it would take to, pro to take to process migrants under our existing laws. 
That can be an hour. It could be more. This Title 42 law now, which has which has officially expired, allows border officials to immediately expel millions of migrants right away. Too bad. You want asylum. We can't have you. We are in a uh, an emergency. Coronavirus is spreading. Communicable disease is spreading. We're in deep shit. Can't come. Okay. This rule drew drew immediate criticism, of course, from the left and human rights activists and actually some public health experts who said it was Trump just trying to not allow migrants to seek asylum. Now, of course, Trump had a horrific, inhumane policy. It probably was both in the sense that they figured, oh, great, we can finally put an end to this. But at the same time, we needed to. It was the right thing to do. Biden came in. He and his officials huddled because he was supposed to be, quote unquote, more open, more liberal in immigration. And when the number of illegal crossings at the southern border continued to rise higher and higher, this goes back to the spring of, 19, of 2021, removing Title 42 was seen as a bad political bet. OK, the Republicans were already attacking Biden for saying that he would not continue Trump era policies, thereby signaling to migrants everywhere. Uh, the border is yours. Come one, come all. And um, Biden kept Title 42. So basically, there's been a pandemic era health rule that's in the uh, legal code going back to the 40s for public health emergencies that has been in a very effective highly effective way to manage this huge volume of migrants coming over without leading to all the overcrowding at border stations, which you're now going to see in overwhelming communities at border towns that migrants would once be released into after being in custody. Okay. Um, just for the record, Biden did try to end the use of this public health order uh, in the past year, but he was stopped twice by the courts. Um, and during the same time, it expanded its use of the policy on migrants from certain countries. Biden allowed certain policies where people from Cuba, uh, Venezuela, and Nicaragua could, could, Nicaragua could come over if they were sponsored and could pay for it. So he found a way to kind of carve this sort of human rights issue uh, exemption into the law. But mainly, he tried to stop Title 42 altogether. Courts didn't allow. Okay. Now, did Title 42, like, stop every illegal immigrant? Of course not. It didn't apply to all of them, okay? It was used, just so people know, because you're going to hear propaganda on the right about this, it was used only about a third of the time since its inception. The majority of people who were expelled came from both Central America and Mexico, okay? Now, this meant that there were close to, uh, there were millions, rather, of migrants who were expelled under Title 42, but it also meant that in non-Title 42 times where immigrants could come to the border and apply for asylum and stay in the country until they learned their fate, that about 2 million of them have been allowed to stay in the country temporarily until they have to go before an immigration judge, which takes forever and argue for asylum because we have a backlog, we don't have enough judges, we have a clusterfuck of a system. OK, now under Title 42, people could also cross as many times as they wanted. This is important without facing steeper penalties. Biden has now uh, with his um, Homeland Security um, Secretary, Cabinet Secretary, Alexander Mayorkas, uh, implemented a law that now penalizes people when somebody crosses the border more than once. This is the end of Title 42. So now, you know, if you if you cross more than once illegally. OK, you are not allowed to come back for five years. But. We've been in this tricky situation where the rhetoric doesn't always match the reality because, haha, that's politics, folks. Biden said the border was closed. It hasn't been entirely closed because many migrants have been allowed to stay. And because of this law for special countries that I mentioned earlier, the Cuba, the Venezuela, Nicaragua, there was a way around it now. That was not the bulk of it, but just to be clear, it wasn't exactly true that the border was closed. Now, um, we're going to go back to regular business. Title 42 is no longer available to border agents, um, so they're going to have to spend the usual lengthy time it's always taken when migrants come and ask for asylum. This is a prolonged period, as I said. It's administrative processing, and it means immigrants, uh, migrants rather stay in holding facilities longer. And then once those facilities reach uh, maximum capacity and they're full, It things get inhumane and there's nowhere for other people to go. So they end up on the street or they end up 
outside shelters somewhere, under bridges, as you probably see. In the days and weeks ahead, folks, it's already started managing the huge volume of people who are going to come here. And trying to do that in a safe and orderly way is going to be a huge challenge and a political headache for Joe Biden. I'm going to say this. In the 2020 presidential debate, all but Joe Biden, if memory serves, certainly he wasn't him. And I believe every other person on that stage, from Klobuchar to Bernie to Warren to Pete, said they didn't believe that the border should be criminalized, right? That we should decriminalize, essentially an open border situation, which was an atrocious position to be taken. Remember, these debates were actually 2019 and early 2020, pre-COVID. Uh, Trump was well poised for re-election and the Democrats were attacking uh, unreasonably left. Okay. You can be pro-immigrant. Like I said, you can believe in an open expanse of America and have secure borders. Countries have a right to secure their border. Um, but you know, Biden still has the headache of now saying, well, title 42 kept them out. I kind of only used it a third of the time and now we're not using it, but we're going to get tough. Okay. Tough because if you try to cross the border, you're going home. Well, the thing about it is, is the way we've done business prior to this is that, as I said, migrants get released uh, into the country while they're awaiting their court cases. Many border communities often overburden um, local officials and shelter operators just to just to take care of people. It's going to become very, very difficult for there to be enough lawyers for asylum to take care of all of these migrants because there's already shortage of the lawyers. There's just there has been, and that's been a huge problem. Um, but Biden administration is banking on the idea that this isn't going to be as bad in the long term because as more migrants get punished for crossing the border multiple times, they have implemented new measures which then restrict their access to asylum. Um, and though there are some other legal humanitarian pathways that they create for migrants, they hope that this new sort of what they think tough policy will actually deter further illegal crossings. We don't know. We don't know. And we do know that, that there's a lot that we can control, but there's a lot that we can't like the multitude of crises in Latin America. I mean, migration, the Southern border has always fluctuated, but the pandemic and the recession that followed has absolutely decimated Latin America harder than anywhere else, actually. And all these people are plunged into despair and destitution. There was actual anti-poverty measures um, in place in a lot of Latin American countries that literally was wiped out by the pandemic. Unemployment is at a 20-year high, okay? There is a huge inflationary problem with food in Latin America because Russia's invasion of Ukraine. We all learned Ukraine is known as the breadbasket of the world. We didn't know that before. We know it now. So there's a key pipeline for all the grain and the fertilizer and all that stuff that has triggered a real rise in food prices. Um, the violence makes things worse. Armed groups uh, have risen up in this vulnerable time and raged and fomented terror against innocent people, which is forcing them to to flee. There are a lot of smugglers and migrants who have been uh, uh, pushing powerful social media campaigns. Like, come to America. You can get in. Stay here. There's no laws. They go on TikTok and do that. Um, yeah. So there's an accumulation of all these grim factors which have brought us here. And with Title 42 going away, it's going to confront our country, Joe Biden, and all of us to say, what should we do? What should we do? It's a perfect storm, right? I mean, leaving all these people with nowhere to go is horrific, but it places our country in a very, very precarious place, right? Our public health measure of Title 42 is kind of stem that tide, but now asylum, right? They were barred from asylum for three years. It's not going to be easy because of all the new eligibility restrictions and the, the high level of deportations that the Biden administration says that they're going to undertake. Uh, there actually have been a lot of people deported. The right wing has lied about that. It's not that every single person crossing the border has gotten in. There have been several million deported already, just to be fair. Um, but there are large flows of migrants literally building up in northern Mexico about to overwhelm the system, which means more families and more children. Okay. And that means that if they don't have a notice to appear before a judge, even though they've applied for one because there aren't enough judges, they're going to be released to the United States. Now, now, 
a lot of people want to work. Okay, people aren't all coming into the United States, despite what Fox News will tell you and what Trump and MAGA will propagandize about. They're coming and they want to work. But as I said, there's all these TikTok campaigns. One of them is hashtag TITULO42. You can look it up yourself. It's been apparently used as a hashtag 96 million times. And it says May 11th, you cannot be deported. Title 42 has come to an end. That's not true. Okay, it's not true, but that's what it says. Now, Venezuela is sending a lot of people because, as you know, since the demise of Hugo Chavez, he took a perfectly uh, prosperous middle class country, rich in oil, and depleted them, sank them into misery, mass socialist failure. Um, and when the world shut down, people had absolutely not, they had nothing to begin with. I mean, the number of people who've come to America from Venezuela is over 7 million people. That's like a quarter of their population. And that's since 2015. So it's not just since COVID, but we have taken 25% of Venezuelans because the misery of Chavez compounded by the misery of COVID has made that happen. Colombia, very work weak, excuse me, worker protections. They have high unemployment at record levels. Brazil had the second number, highest number of COVID deaths worldwide. So immigrants who had traveled from across these places in Latin America, whether they went to Colombia or Brazil, really, really, really were the first to lose any hope of their livelihood. Okay. Uh, Nicaraguans typically came in less numbers, uh, but their authoritarian government and their inflationary economy has prompted thousands of them to leave in recent years. Gang violence and homicides uh, in Ecuador, Haiti always Poor Haiti always suffers with something that a huge cholera outbreak and a huge hunger crisis and all this inner uh, gang warfare that went on. Um, that became uh, a reason to leave. Um, and so it's 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 needless to say, it's a mess. Um, and people are um, looking to come here. Mexico has only agreed to take in expelled migrants from a handful of countries in the region, which has then forced Biden's administration to help to fly, excuse me, them back to their homelands. That takes longer because of the cost and logistics and not all the governments will accept flights that have expelled their own people. Um, it, 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 since taking office, as I said, according to federal data, the Biden administration has allowed 1.8 million migrants to stay in the country awaiting asylum hearings, many of whom turn themselves in after crossing the border. There's also many unknown number of people. We don't know how many of those are, uh, but people know it's advantageous to come here. People know that America is a place they want to be. Um, as I said, social media is encouraging them and it, it, this is a problem. Okay. This is a huge problem, and it's not um, it, it's not something that has a political answer because we don't have a functional political system. I mean, we've had honorable attempts at immigration reform under George W. Bush and Obama both failed because it was torpedoed by the xenophobes in the far right and people on the far left who do not want any – kind of restriction. Okay. Um, there's 660,000 migrants waiting in Mexico right now, poised to cross. Okay. On Tuesday alone of this week, border officials apprehended more than 11,000 people. That's an increase by seven or 8,000 crossings a day up from last week. So you're going to see like 10,000 people or more want to cross the border or try to. Okay. There's another 60 to 65,000 migrants waiting along Mexico's northern border. We are not equipped. We are not equipped, and our laws are outdated. Okay? These laws go back to the early 80s, our asylum laws, our refugee laws. Nothing has been adapted. Nothing has been changed. Okay? For instance, the limits on visas allowing people, for example, to work in the United States were based on our economy in the 90s. Those limits haven't changed even though the economy is twice its size. The facilities we built were designed originally just to hold Mexican men who were looking for work. They do look like jails where people are crammed into a single space. They were not created by Trump, actually. He engaged in family separation, but he didn't put them there. These, these 
kind of government sanctioned, ca sanctioned cages. But the government has told us that they're not safe to hold children, other vulnerable populations. You probably heard during the Trump era how many kids were sexually abused in these places. And the United States, given that it has does not have enough space or cages, as it were, has had to set up all these temporary spaces to accommodate families and children, but they still don't have enough space. Okay. And all of our enforcement was designed around a time when people were uh, trying to evade the authorities, you know, just come through, sneak through to try to get work. Well, now there's thousands of people not doing that. They're literally in full force, face forward in public view, fleeing all these humanitarian crises I just spoke about, hoping to get here and seek asylum. Democrats and Republicans can't agree on shit. Each party has polarized this issue. It's been a disgrace. Failed authoritarian states in all of our Western hemisphere here have led to this, as I said, struggling economies and the like. Um, it's failing states across our hemisphere that has led to this, and there is no federal plan. This is to limit capacity. We often rely on our border communities like El Paso and other ones to provide like respites for people and shelters. And we've increased federal funding in the past year. It's still not enough to address the needs of their local governments and nonprofits. A lot of nonprofits are trying to help. And border towns have a lot of tension. Eight migrants were killed in Brownsville, Texas uh, just last week when an SUV barreled into a crowd um, that was kind of standing by a homeless shelter that helps migrants. Is there a hate crime at this point, but we don't know any more than that. Uh, migrants sleeping in the streets of El Paso is not uncommon. Um, and the federal government, you know, does not have a plan to safely transport, release migrants to other cities or to offer enough support to local governments once they get there. Migrants are also not able to apply for a work authorization in the United States for months. So working, working legally could help them cover their costs, but they're not allowed to do that. The backlog of cases, the lack of judges, and there's 11 million people in the country now that don't have a path to citizenship, and many of these people coming in will join them. That's exactly right. So, yeah, that's that's the mess, folks. And I don't have an answer. I can tell you that if these numbers surge and are... um you might say, um, so widespread and so pervasive at the time of the 2024 election, things are going to be very different. And as I said, you know, we here at Dirty Moderate believe in democracy. We support um, freedom for everybody. Um, but having a f view of freedom, a philosophical, philosophical view of freedom is not incompatible with having a secure border. And this is going to be a headache more for the left than the right because the right are challenging Right? The incumbent. They're going to make Biden look like he has been ineffectual and weak on keeping our borders safe. And every incident of violence or crime is going to be magnified as a mass crime pandemic led by the Democrats, the Democrats who don't believe in a border. Anyway, I'm just telling you what they're going to do. And quite frankly, there's no common ground being found, and there should be because our policy is unacceptable now. And we're sitting here working on 30, 40 year old laws that do not apply to our world. Every president gets tarred or feathered or celebrated for the border or it's border border crisis. And it will happen to Biden too. For all intents and purposes, fairly or not, politics is about perception, not reality. And this will be Biden's border crisis, however unfair or fair, depending upon your point of view, that may be. Folks, thank you for indulging me. Um, we will be watching this, tracking this, as you will. Again, today's May 11th, Title 42 has expired, and we are in a new era of um, our immigration crisis in this country. Um, as always, uh, make sure you check us out on TikTok. We're at Dirty Moderate Nation. Lots of great videos. So much good content coming your way. Some big guests coming up soon and some big projects we are excited to announce, but not yet. Uh, but we are positioning you and us and others and our listeners for quite the 2024 uh, election. It's going to be bonkers, but stay with us. In the meantime, stay dirty, stay moderate, and stay safe.